hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Honor and praise, glory be unto you, Lamb of God. Once again, Father, we are come to the call of prayer. We come to the place where the life of the ascended ones have become united to your intentions and counsels and purpose for their time and generation. This morning, Father, we respond to your voice. We respond to your demand. We respond, O oh God, yes, Father, to the summonings of your Spirit. Blessed are those whose hearts are set on a journey. Our hearts are set on you this morning. Our lives, O oh God, are set on the journey. The journey to the place of divine appearance. The journey to us, the place of divine impartation, transformation. The place where our eyes of understanding are enlightened. The place where we are calibrated, yes. The place where, O oh God, we are able to see into the desire and intentions. We ask you once again to lead us, to show us, to guide us, to enable us, empower us, endow us as men and women whose hearts are set to see your good pleasure manifest in their time and generation. I honor you once again, Spirit of the Lord, this morning. We step into this new day, yes, Father, with incense. Yes, sanctifying and purifying the realms. Thank you once again that our heart will bring forth your desired counsel. Teach us your ways. Lead us in the path of truth and righteousness. Help us once again, Lord, to incline our ears to your desired interests. Not shifted, not moved. But waiting at the gate post, hearing your voice and your counsel. Lord, our heart once again, seek your word. We seek your face. We seek your heart. We seek your desire. Yes, our heart longs for you. More than the watchman wait for the morning, we wait for you. Bring us, O oh God, into fullness again. Help us. To be a generation of men and women who are not caught sleeping. Deliver us from slumber. Deliver us from lukewarmness. Awaken us. May we hear the sound. May we hear the bell of awakening. May we hear the trumpet. Yes, this morning. May we journey towards the place of true alignment. Oh, we bless you. We glorify you. Come. Holy Spirit, lead us, teach us, guide us, awaken us to faith, awaken us, yes, to grace, to courage, awaken us to a new understanding of strength so we can go, Lord, in this might that you have revealed to us. Thank you, O oh God. Feed us anew with the meal of heaven. Feed us afresh with, yes, the bread that you have just baked, oh, hallelujah. Help us, Father. Enable us this morning. Strengthen us. Equip us. Energize us. Holy Spirit, come. Take your place. Have your way. Be enthroned upon the very throne of our heart. Sit this morning. We crown you King, Lord of Lords. We crown you king, king of glory. We crown you king, mighty God, mighty one of Israel. We crown you king over our lives. He said men always ought to pray and not to faint. We will not faint in this season. We will continue to stand. Hallelujah. Friends, if you're out there joining me this morning, it's a pleasure once again to share this moment with you. Let's journey together via the Spirit. Hopefully, this will not be a long uh, uh, session. I just feel a stirring in my spirit that uh, we need to continually make prayer a priority. Prayer must be 
must become the first and the foremost thing in our life. And when we say prayer, we have to understand that it's something that pleases the heart of the Father. Because when we pray, we are communing with the Lord. We are talking with Him. We are interacting with Him. Prayer is not just about bringing our request. Yes, there's a place for that. There's a room for that. But we see prayer as a point and a place where we become one in spirit with the Lord. Where we understand the heart of the Father. Where the burden of the Lord becomes what leads us, guides us. Where His burden becomes our chief priority. Prayer is when the Lord comes and takes his place, his seat in our lives. So he can guide and amen, rule every aspect of our being for his glory. Prayer is a point and a place where the enemy cannot reach us. Because as you pray, you invite him into, yes, your presence, your life, your faculties. And how we need this sense of understanding, particularly in these days of great distraction, in this period where there's a falling away, in this time where there are all kinds of things being erected, distracting people, yes, from the path of the Lord. In these days where we have, as we have read, yes, where, you know, you have the Jeroboams of this world erecting a false order, a false altar, erecting a false pattern of worship. Our heart must be aligned to the, to the desires of God. I want to quickly read a scripture again. You know, Luke chapter 18. Jesus was speaking to his, his, to his disciples with a parable. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable. Every time he wants to communicate or commune something very important with you know, his disciples, he always, you know, speak to them in parable. Because that's the culture of the day. It, it, it shows them how important that thing is. He wants them to understand that this thing I'm saying to you, you need to really sit, think about it, think over it. You know, Bible says he spoke to them in a parable to show them, to display to them that they should always pray and not to give up. And I was zeroing on that word to always pray and not to give up. We give up based on the state of our mind. We give up based on what we hear and what, you know, we, 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 we perceive. How our mind and, you know, state of thought, you understand? Yes, our, our feels. We give up when we look at certain things and we, we you know, we, we ended up in, in a certain conclusion. There are so many things that will make us want to give up. But Jesus is comparing prayer to a, a buffer zone. He says when you pray, you know, when you pray, you won't give up. But if you don't pray, you're going to give up. How many things the enemy has really, really, you know, attacked in our life that he wants us to give up on? How many things has the Lord promised us that because there was a delay, we, 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 we've given up? You see, prayer, so, so to me, prayer is a place where our vision is calibrated, recalibrated, where our sense of hope and faith, amen, yes, you know, be, becomes renewed. It's a place of the renewal of strength. You know, you will agree with me that when we begin to pray, oftentimes people don't have that, you know, zest and motivation to want to do it. But you continue to do it. You just continue. There's so many things we can learn, we can do to keep us in the mood of prayer, to keep us in the mood of prayer, to keep us in that environment where we want to pray. Prayer, I was teaching my children this morning, prayer must be something that you love. It cannot be a duty, just a duty. You have to love it. Men always ought to pray and that's where we've got to see prayer as a point, as a place where we commune with the Father. If you want to hear the voice of your father, then you have to pray. If you want to, you understand, know his ways, his will, his plan, his purpose, then you have to pray because prayer is a bridge. Prayer is a vehicle that takes us from where we are to where we ought to be. Prayer is a vehicle. It takes us from point A to point B. Where you are, amen, is not the place you want to be. So then you need to pray. And then prayer begins to take you there. Prayer begins to guide you there. Hallelujah. Men always ought to pray 
and not to faint, meaning that if we don't pray, we will faint. It says, if you are fainting in the days of war, in the days of battle, it says, little is your strength. Friends, we need strength for the days ahead. We need strength for the journey ahead. We need wisdom, direction, instruction, guidance. We need supply for what is ahead of us. But all of these are going to be received in the place of communion, in the place of prayer. And we refuse to give up because we understand what the enemy would do when we give up. You can't give the enemy an inch, a step in your life. It says we must not give room for the enemy. So while we are dealing with the issues of vision, I also want us to understand that what keeps our vision alive is in the place of prayer. Please don't take this word for granted. I was listening to yesterday's, uh, I was yesterday, uh, yes, a uh, uh, morning, uh, is, no, no, day for yesterday morning prayer session. Wow, what a time. These are words that are coming from the throne of God. Let's not take these things for granted. Let's continue to steer our heart. Let's continue to keep ourselves, yes, in that place where God can reach us. He said, it's your sin that have separated you from me. Let's not allow sin. Sin is when we are not able to pray. You know that, that that is a manifestation of sin. When you cannot pray, it means something has crept into your heart, into your life. Who we are, what we represent, and how we, you know, represent the Lord is through the place of effective prayer life. Jesus told them a parable that they should always pray and not to faint or to give up. And then he went further. In verse 2 of Luke 18, he said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. So prayer has nothing to do with the condition that you see. Prayer is not motivated by the condition. That's the first thing the Lord opened my eyes to see this morning. Prayer, amen, is not motivated by the, how things look. No, prayer should be motivated by the one, amen, who can change things. And this is the, 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 the lesson here. The Bible started by describing that in a certain town, just like you and I know we live in all kinds of certain towns. And there are all kinds of judges. They are powerful people. There are all kinds of things that have been established by certain judges who are under the powers and the influence of, you know, of the enemy. There's a certain judge, but there is also a widow there in that same town who kept coming to him, to the judge, with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Grant me justice against my adversary. You know that, that there are there are certain people who, who, who are in the position of authority, who are in the position of power. Yet you know those people really do not represent you know, the interests of the people, do not have truth in their heart. If you don't bribe them, they don't, they don't, they, they don't do what they need to do. If you don't worship them, if you don't prostrate, if you don't, you know, if, if, if you don't pump up their ego, they don't respond to you. There's nothing, this woman has nothing to offer to this judge. There's no bribe this woman has to give. <laughs> Have you been to certain places? They tell you, ah, here, you've got to understand how things work here. If you don't know who, if you don't know who can know who, who's connected to who, you don't get anything done. There's a certain judge, he's a judge, he's a person of justice, he's a person of power, he's a person of influence, but his heart is not in alignment with the will of God. The Bible says, he neither feared God nor cared about the thought of the people. And in that same vicinity, in that same environment, the Bible says there's a widow who kept coming back. This woman knows her place, knows her right. The Bible says in verse 4, and for some time, he refused to listen. The point here is how God 
use the prayer of this woman to touch, to change, yes, the, the, the mindset of this widow. And that's what I want us to look into as we engage. Prayer has the ability, the power to change even the heart of the most wicked people. Prayer has the, the, you know, the, the, the power to, to turn things around in an environment where you think, I don't, uh, uh, I don't have a chance here. When you look at things, you just feel that I don't have a chance here. There's no way I'll be able to make it here. There's no way I'll be able to stand out here. There's no way I'll be able to succeed here. There's no way, you know, I'm, a, I'm just a foreigner in this country. Foreigners don't make it. I don't have a right. I don't have authority. I don't have a place. I don't have the qualification. We can be in that situation where we feel defeated, where we feel, you understand, yes, disenfranchised, disadvantaged. The, 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 the things around you, you know, proves that you don't have an advantage. I can advance. I can get that thing. I can get that qualification. They said if you don't sleep with that professor, you don't get it. You can't get, you can't pass your exam. You, you, you know, that's the situation that, you know, we find ourselves. If you don't know somebody at the, you know, at the home affairs that you can't get that thing done. If you don't know somebody, you understand, you know, at the police station, you can't get it done. If you don't know somebody at, you know, at, you know, the, you know, the government parastata, you can't get it done. Uh-uh. And that's the lie the enemy tells us. And guess what? We begin to look for who we, who, who we know or who knows somebody. And they say, well, do you have a bribe? Do you have something to give? I've been in various situations where people want me to give bribe. And I, I refuse. I said, no. I remember when I was coming down from, you know, uh, uh, Cape Town. And I was coming down to, to this part, you know, to this part. And I've got some loads. And, you know, this, the, the money was quite high on, on, on the luggages. And the guy looked at him and said, you know, and I was begging him. I said, can't you guys, I mean, in, uh, into Cape, can't you guys just, you know, give me some discount? And this guy basically was telling me, well, we can do it, but you will have to pay me that money. I can reduce that money for you. You pay me. You give me that money, but it's not going to go into, I said, no, put whatever is there, there. Let me pay that extra. I'm not going to pay you a bribe. Because the moment you pay a bribe, you will do it again. You will do it again. It becomes part of your life. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I remember when I was doing my, working on my, you know, papers, South African paper. Oh, many times people have told me, why don't you just do an arranged marriage? Do just you get your paper. I said, no. If I do it, then I have no voice. I'd rather go back to Nigeria. I'm not going to build what God has called me to do on a lie. It took me three years, three years. But when the time came, God raised help for me. I got a call from Pretoria. From Pretoria. And this man told me what to do. So just do this and then you it's done. And that was it. I tell you, there may be a delay. Like this woman. But when you continue to pray, when you stand your ground, because sometimes God will allow you to find yourself in a situation and they'll be watching. Let us, let's see. If you're going to depend on the arm of flesh or you're going to depend on God. Let us see. Let's see if you're going to depend. You know, I've been in a situation where I can just immediately connect, to, you know, two and two together. And then I'm out. I'm in a better position. No, no. But I would choose to continue in that situation I find myself that looks difficult, that looks like I'm suffering. People will look at me and think, why are you suffering? Why are you going through all of this? No, there's a value system we're trying to maintain. There's a kingdom order that we're seeking, except the Lord builds the house. Whatever you built that may look strong, there's a wind that is going to come that will collapse the house. You have to build capacity on the inside of you. And that can only be done in the place of trusting God, in the place of knowing the Lord. 
Many people have been disappointed in my life because I won't do certain things. I won't move, you know, certain things. I won't, no, I'm not going to compromise as the Lord gives me grace. As, as long as it's within my ability and capacity and, you know, understanding, I will always stand for truth. It's not easy. It's not, it's not the easiest thing. But guess what? It's doable. The only thing is you will suffer a while. And that's what the Bible says. You will have to suffer a while. If you're not willing to suffer for a while, why are you walking with the Lord? Don't you know that suffering is part of the journey? Don't you know that lack is part of the journey? Why do you suffer? Why do you lack? Because you refuse to compromise. That's the reason. That's the reason why we suffer. We don't suffer because, you understand, uh, we compromise. No, no, no. We suffer because we choose not to. But people don't want to suffer. People who don't want to be rejected. But you'll be rejected. You'll be hated for standing for truth. But see, that is what makes you different from the rest. This woman refused. She kept persisting. Avenge me of my adversary. Give me justice. The land is not made just for the rich and for the strong and, you know, for the judges alone. The land is also made for the widow. She's a widow. She has no one to support her. She has no one to back her. But she believed. She kept. I mean, Jesus is the one giving this story in the context of prayer. How many times have you compromised just because you don't have a prayer life? I well, I got, I got the car. You know, I got the house. But how did you get it? You'll be surprised what people call testimony. You'll be shocked when you truly hear what people have done in the name of testimony. Most testimony that people give in church indeed are not testimony. Because when you begin to understand the compromise, then you realize, but this is not a testimony. But people won't tell you, you know, what they did, what they compromised. No, they will tell you, oh, God provided. How did God provide? Different God provide. It's a different God. It's a different God. God is our, may, our way maker. He's the one who promised to make a way in the desert. He promised to bring forth spring water in the desert. But can you wait? And the Lord did for Sarah. I read that scripture yesterday. And the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. The Lord visited Sarah. The Lord visited Abraham as he promised. Yes. He's a faithful God. Do you know him as a faithful God, friends? Do you know the Lord as a faithful God? Have you come to understand the faithfulness of God? Have you come to realize, do you have a testimony of the faithfulness of God? Do you have a testimony of the faithfulness of God in your life? What side of God do you know? In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. He does, this guy does not bother. And there was a widow in that town who kept, that's the key word, she kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my enemies you are in the position to do it grant me justice for some time he refused when you are refused for some time what do you do when you walk into that office and they say sorry no what do you do because that's a reality for some time he refused by the time we are refused one two three times you know what we do we give up we go look for an alternative We don't have that sense of doggedness to continue. To continue to pray. To continue to ask. To continue to seek. That's what the scripture says. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. And the door will be open. Certain doors don't open once. You don't knock once and then they open for you. No. You have to keep knocking. You have to be persistent. Sometimes they want to see how, de how determined you are. They want to see if indeed you really truly mean what you are. Amen. Engaging in. Do you really want this thing? How bad do you want it? 
How desperate are you? And when I say desperate, please, I need to clarify. I'm not saying being desperate in the sense of anxiousness because that's not going to help you. But desperate standing on what God says. Particularly when you, are, when you know that this is the will of God for your life. According to Romans, yes. We can know the will of God. And that's why we need amen, a spirit that is awakened so that we know that this is what God wants for me. This is my right. This is what God has promised. The fact that God wants something for you does not mean that that thing falls on your laps. We know that. It doesn't work like that. The fact that God says you are healed does not mean that the next day, you know, you get a miracle. No. Three years ago, they told me by this year I was going to, you know, go blind with the condition of my eyes. That's what the, you know, the, you know, the expert told me. He said, in two years time, you're going to grow, go blind with the condition of your eyes. I said, well, that's your report. But that's not my report. I've been to the hospital to, to, to you know, to, to get you know, an appointment for all. No, no they, sorry, we can't help you. All. Particularly when you're a, you're a foreigner with all of this thing happening in South Africa. That no, we, we don't prioritize things like that, you know, for foreigners. And, and I've got a full South African, at least maybe not full, but I've got a resident permit. I'm entitled to, you know, medical operation things like that no but guess what i decide well i know the greatest physician and i know wisdom i understand wisdom what am i saying sometimes you just have to if i listen to what you know the the, the, the experts uh, and I, all i was doing is just crying and weeping by now i would have grown blind because the, all the signs were there my eyes was very bad but I don't confess that again. I keep telling my eyes, there are still books to write. There are still things to pray, to declare. There are still things we need to design. The work, the work cannot, be, cannot be stopped now. I need my eyes to finish the assignment. You get it? Be done unto you according to your faith. According to your faith. Somebody said, don't you have a medical aid? I don't have a medical aid. If I have a medical aid, why would I be? I would have just gone there. I believe in medicine. I believe. I mean, I've just gone there. And they op- it's just an operation that needs to be done. But if you don't have that resource, what do you do? You hang on to the word of God. You hang on to truth. You stand Sometimes the Lord will allow certain things to look like this. To do what? To boost your faith. Every time I pray, I make decrees. What do you think is happening? My faith is getting stronger. Yes. So you don't give up. The fact that you were rejected. Listen, the Bible says, she refused him. Or rather, he refused her. But she kept persisting. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself. Nobody. He he came to his own senses. Yes. There are situations that will come to your senses on your behalf. In this season. There There are people that will be. That they will just have a different mindset. Let me help this person. You know what? Because you have talked to God. You are talking to God. You are not depending on them. You're depending on the one who moves the heart of men. Hallelujah. Maybe that maybe that's your case this morning. There are things I want to do for the kingdom that I've not even I've not even begin to scratch. And you think I'm just going to fold my hands and say because I, I went to some you know expert and he t- tells me I'm going to lose my sight. I said, well, that's your, that's, thank you. I, I, I accept what you have said, but I don't accept it. Some of us, we accept what the enemy tells us. We are quick to accept it. We are quick to accept it. We are quick to accept it. Listen, your faith has to do with your sight. What do you see spiritually? 
What do you know? What, what, are you, what are you picking? What has God said to you? There's nothing impossible. The things that people are doing, you understand, are based on their belief and based on their trust. I'm just encouraging us this morning, whatever time zone you're connecting with, don't give up on faith. Don't give up on God and don't give up, amen, on yourself. Keep believing. This widow, a widow means that she has no one to assist her, to defend her. The husband, the husband is dead. There's nobody. But she kept going to this judge. Even though, the judge said, even though I don't fear God, can you see that? Or care what people think. That's a very powerful position. Don't fear God. I don't care what people think. This is the position of this man. Yet because this widow kept bothering me, kept persisting, kept coming, kept showing up. I love the word the Lord dropped in my spirit. Now I see where it's connected. Visibility. Because I'm wondering. I woke up sometimes. I just wake up with words in my spirit. What I woke up with this morning was visibility. And I'm thinking, okay, oh God, what are you saying regarding visibility? Now it's, now it's clear. The, wo- the woman kept making herself visible. She kept coming. She kept going back. You're not going to, I'm not going to go into hiding. <laughs> you know, the enemy wants to beat us to the point. So you go to some place and go and hide. You go and hide your head. Go and hide your place. You have no place here. Bully you. You have no place here. You have no place here. This place is not for people like you. No, we don't want you here. Move from this place. You can't live there. You can't stay there. You can't have a job in that place. You can't have, you know, you don't have a voice in that place. You, they beat you. You run. You go and hide somewhere. No. Visibility. Visibility. Keep coming. Let them get tired of you. Keep going back. Visibility. It's making sense. Thank you, Father. It's making sense. Visibility. Elijah, Eli, Elisha kept sending back, you know, that apprentice prophet. Keep going back. Visibility. It's going to appear. You may not see it now, but keep going. But, sir, there is no cloud. Keep going back. Keep praying. Keep, keep fasting. Keep studying the word of God. Keep believing the word of God. The Bible says, he that will come will come. Don't let somebody tell you you don't have a seat. You don't have a seat. You don't have a chair at the table. Don't let anybody tell you just because you are Mephibosheth. You've been dropped and you can't walk. And therefore, you don't have a place on the seat. David said, go fetch him. Go bring him here. He's got a place here. I have a place. I have a portion. I have a voice in the land. My voice will be heard. The purpose of God for my life will be established. Nations will know me. They will know what God has committed into my hand. They will know that there's a different order of men and women. That not everyone out there that is called a pastor, a man of God, that compromises, that lies, you know, that is after money. No, they will know. They will hear. They will come to, yes, the knowledge of this rising of truth. I'm not going to go into hiding. You know, things happen to you and the devil wants to keep you in hiding. So go and hide. Go and hide. I remember, the Lord told me, get up, Isaiah. Go and do what I've called you to do. I said, God, but you see the way, I, you see, the, see my condition. He said, you go. You stop doing this thing, that will be the end of your ministry. Friends, I wasn't feeling it in the physical but I heard God and I thank God that I did. What are you hearing? You don't know how many times I've been rejected. Go back there. You don't know how many times I've failed there. Well, keep learning. Go back and learn from the things you have failed at. You only fail when you give up. You only fail when you give up. 
Every failure, you understand, is a step further to doing the thing right. If you learn your mistake. If you learn your mistake. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to be rejected. That's why those in the marketing, that's why they, they, they make it. You know what? Yeah. Have you seen when, when they want to sell you something? They put it on your face. I was listening to somebody. It's all making sense. This guy said, you know why Coca-Cola is one of the, you know, one of the highest, you know, companies in the, you know, financial company in the world and all of that. You know why? He said, because it's not about what Coca-Cola sells. This guy is saying something. He says, it's not just about what Coca-Cola is. He it's, said, it's, it's about how Coca-Cola position, the, you know, what they're selling. I'm like, okay, all right. That makes sense. Have you seen? And you can take that and apply that to the spirit. I'm not looking at the physical concept. If Coca-Cola or any, you know, one of these companies want to, they make sure that they take the front row. You see their product first before you see any other thing. You see, that's called visibility. They pay for that space. You can't find Coca-Cola hiding behind, you know, another God knows what. No, they, you, they want their thing to be at the front row. You, you go, go to shops and look at what I'm talking about. You go to the supermarket, the mall, you will see. If they don't have their own stand, if they're put with other, you know, other products, they take the front row. They pay for that front row. God has placed you in the front row. Because nobody's going to see if you're at the back. And I'm not just looking at this, you know, physically, naturally. Are you visible in the spirit? That's my point. They say, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. You, we don't know you. Who are you? Ah, do you have visibility? Do you have visibility in the spirit? The clouds are forming. The clouds are forming, friends. Let your prayer, amen, create visibility in the spirit for you. Because when there is enough visibility, the rain will fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of God. She refused to give up. Even though he also refused, she also refused. You refused me, I also refused. I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm going to continue to engage. Seek, knock. I'm going to continue to do that. It's your position, it's your place to make this thing happen. Don't go somewhere else. Don't let the enemy, you understand, bully you to run to somewhere else. That's what we do. Oh, they can't help you. Okay, go somewhere. No, 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 I'm not going somewhere. This is where, yes, I've been promised. This is where I'm supposed to be getting my answer. This is what the Lord has promised me. This is what God, amen, have asked me. I will give you the nations for your inheritance. The uttermost part of the world, yes, for your possession. This is my inheritance. Ask of me today. Lord, I'm asking you for South Africa. I'm asking of you for America, for Europe. Yes, for Asia. I'm asking of you Africa. I'm asking of you the continent. You say you will give it to me because I've been asking. I've been asking for the nations for the past 30 years of my life. Ask of me and I will give you the nations. I have a very strong faith. And guess what? We've reached nations. You'll be surprised. The number of nations that we've been able to reach with the word of the Lord. But I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. We still want to push this thing. Yes. Until the knowledge of the glory of God covers the earth as the water covers the sea. Oh, Father, we ask of you. We ask of you this morning for the nations we refuse to give up. We refuse to give in. We refuse, oh God, yes, to be to be relegated behind, oh God. We declare that this day we rise up, oh God, with a new voice, with a new passion. We ask of you this morning that you will give us, oh Father. Yes, Lord, like this woman, Father, we continue to persist. We refuse to give up. We refuse to bow. We refuse, Lord, to be relegated. We proclaim this day visibility. The Bible says, yes, as this woman was refused for a season, but she also kept persisting. Finally, he came to himself. He came to himself. Though I do not fear God, nor 
bother about what people think. Yet because this woman kept, kept, kept bothering me. She, this guy saw this woman bothering, but in her, in her own mind, she wasn't bothering. She was making demands. She was making requests. Come on. When, when you begin to look at what's going on in your city, in your nation, don't give up. Amen. Begin to continue to make decree and declaration regarding what you desire, regarding what the word of God says. That is what is going to bring a change. Don't fold your hand and say, look, at this whole place is full of you know drugs. This whole place is full of gangsters. No. What are you saying? What are you decreeing? What are you seeing because it's what you see that you're going to get that's what you're going to get you have to have vision for prayer you have to have vision for intercession you have to have vision listen listen you are not the person to bring a change but you know the person that can bring a change yours is to continue to watch yours is to continue to watch position yourself on the watch position yourself amen at the top of the hill at the top of the mountain position yourself your position is to continue to build walls to elevate you hallelujah so you can continue to engage hallelujah and let god do the rest stop trying to do what god can do you do what you're called to do it's my position to pray it is my position to steer you to pray it is my position to make you see hallelujah your responsibility when you begin to see it you begin to engage you begin to engage because as far as you have seen amen is to the degree your spirit will be motivated hallelujah to pray we ask of you father for the nation we refuse to give up we refuse to listen to the enemy that says no the enemy the, the nations are doomed no, we refuse to see, yes, what the enemy is telling us. No, Father, we change our sight. We change our focus. We stand on your word and we declare this day, O oh God, change has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. The chains are falling. Did you see what happened in America? If there's one thing you can't take from Donald Trump is that this guy is a fighter. That's the attitude we need. That's the attitude of a winner. I've got one of his books here. Years ago, I got this book. How to win in life. You just know this guy is a winner. He knows how to win. Look at how many times they try to assassinate him. And I'm not telling you that he's the best of a leader. No, but I'm just telling you, he's got an attitude that many people need in this end of days. You need to have that attitude that will not give up, that will not give up. I mean, the entire system was against him. Every odds was against this man. They tried to drain his, you know, his wealth with law, with lawsuits and all kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, that's a man you you, you can learn from. There, there are, you see, winning is an attitude. Prayer is an attitude. That first shot that this guy, you know, the, 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 the thing missed his head. He was still saying, fight, 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 fight. Come on. That is an attitude. You know, the enemy comes and bully you. What do you do? We go and hide. <laughs> I'm not going to give my life for these people. I mean, I, can, I have money. I can enjoy myself. If, there's, if there is nothing you are fighting for, if you don't have a cause that you are fighting, if, if what you are fighting for is, is not bigger than you, then it's not the vision. Come on. Did you hear what I just said? If what you are fighting for is not bigger than you, you then you, you don't have a vision. It's not a vision. If it's a vision, God will start to raise people on your behalf. You see how God raised somebody like Elon Musk? Yes. And then the, the Kennedy, and then the others. Yes, God will begin to raise resource strength. Say, we, we see what this man is doing. We, we hear what you're doing. Now, we want to support you. Look at the money Elon Musk has invested at port. Yes, call it an investment. If he doesn't believe in that cause, he will not invest there because that man is not foolish. He's an investor. He knows where we he knows where winning is. He, he can smell winning from afar. And he likes to break ground in, in areas where people tell you, you know, it's impossible. Those are attitudes we need to learn. Those are kingdom, part of the kingdom attitude. We're easily defeated. We easily give up. This is a widow. She said, No, 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 I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. 
There are attitudes we have to we have to love in this end of days. What has God said to you? What have God said to you about that ministry, about that calling? When everything around you look impossible, it looks like you are on a defeated end. No, just look at just look at what has happened to you know uh, uh, um, Donald Trump. It's a good example, at least on this case. It's a good example. If somebody tried to kill you twice, what do you do? You go and hide yourself somewhere, isn't it? Rather than this guy going to hide, he kept showing himself. No wonder this morning I woke up with the word visibility. I'm like, God, what are you talking about? <laughs> this word doesn't make sense to me. Now he's making sense. Visibility. Keep keep showing up in the place of prayer. Come on. Keep showing up. God, I'm here again. I'm here again. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. Every time you wake up, let the powers of darkness go crazy. So, oh, he's awake again. She's awake again. What are we going to do? Yes. You must give them headache. You, you must give them headache. As long as I've got breath in me, I will not be silent. The nations will come Hallelujah to the feet of the Lord. The nations will bow the knees to Yahweh. The nations, hallelujah, will submit. The kings of the earth will submit themselves. Yes. Ask of me. I came to this nation by a mandate. Go. Raise for me a people. And that's what we've been doing. When we move somewhere else, we continue with the mandate. We don't give up. We are advancing to the finish. We're not going back to tell him, sorry, Lord. <laughs> there are giants in the land. That, that's why they sent us there. Because they know there are giants in the land. Come on. I said that's why they sent you there. Because there are giants in the land. You don't run from giants. You don't run from giants. You run to them. Because greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. He who is in you has given you the strategy of how to defeat giants. They said Ezekiel, don't look at their face. And your problem sometimes is you look at the enemy. You look at their position. You look at their stand. And you forget the position, the, fa the, the face of the one who sent you. Don't let the enemy overwhelm you. They said this is the land that swallows its inhabitant. Ah! What an error. This is the land that swallows its inhabitants. Come on! How can we be swallowed? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The people who dwell in it belongs to Yahweh. Come on. It's a new day. Arise. Take your place. Let your faith be calibrated. Let your faith be strengthened. Let your hope, hallelujah, rise from a new horizon. Set your heart on a journey. Set your heart on a program. Though you go through the valley of Baca, make it a spring. Everyone grow from strength to strength to appear in Zion. The road to Zion is a road, hallelujah, yes, of Baca. You want to get to Zion? You have to know how to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You want to get to Zion, the place of perfected beauty? You want to receive the promise? You want to fulfill God's intention? You want to accomplish the mandate of God for your life? Then you have to be ready, amen, to face giants, to face the Anakins, to face the Jebusites, you understand? To face the Canaanites. They are all there waiting for you on the road. So don't let anybody tell you you are not able. The one who sent you, the one who said, leave Egypt, go to the place called Promised Land. He knew that there will be Canaanites there. He already told them there will be Jebusites there. There will be Philistines there. There will be Perizzites there. There will all be all kinds of, you know, pest, pest on the way. But guess what? I am with you. He led them by the pillar of fire. You understand? By night and the pillar of cloud by day. Come on. The Lord is our God. He's our Lord giver. He's the governor among the people. We are not afraid. We rise up this day in the power, in the strength, yes, of this new day. We declare that we are an apostolic people. We have the wisdom of God to build, and yet we have the strength like an eagle to fly. We fly ab above walls. 
The reason why they give you wings is to break barriers, to break limitations, to break boundaries. Have you seen where an eagle is not able to fly into? No. Rise up with the wings of a wind. Let the spirit of him who has called you steer your heart into a new day of utterance. Proclaim the day of the law. Begin to take possession of the land. Rise up. I have given you the land. Go take possession of it. Take possession. Look to the north. Look to the south. The east and the west. To as far as your eyes can see. I have given it to you. But you've got to walk through. You've got to proclaim it. You've got to declare it. Take your place in Jesus' name. Take your place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on. Let your head be rise above the water. Do not allow yourself, yes, to die in the quicksand. Ask for help. Let him pull you out. He set your feet upon the rock to stay. He's delivered you from the merry clay. In the name of Jesus, this is not your day of sinking. This is not your day of dying. This is not your time, yes, you understand, of, of reclining to the place of Loloba. This is not the place where you look at your feet and say, but I can't walk. I'm Mephibosheth. I'm paralyzed. You're not paralyzed. I say you're not paralyzed. I said the Lord is coming. He's giving you strength. Jesus looked at that man at the gate. He's been there for 30, 30, 30, 38 years. He's been there, not being able to walk. Jigalamanda brogosto balabaha. Lehi kantom bragasto brianda baha. Jesus perceived he's been there for so long. Do you want to walk? He said, but sir, there's nobody to push me into the water. I'm not talking about somebody pushing you into the water. We're not talking about an angel coming. I am the angel. I'm the angel of the Lord's army. I've come to heal you. But see, this guy can't see again. Religion has blinded him. Religion is a terrible thing. It will keep you in the same spot. It will change your mindset. Capture your thought pattern. When you see miracle, when you see healing, when your day of deliverance comes, you can't even see it again. He kept referring to the old. He's lived his life in bitterness. Imagine this man watching people when the angel come to steer the water. Watch how people jump in it. And he's asking, please, can somebody just push me into this water? Nah. -uh. We live in a world of selfishness, self-centeredness. And we've created all kinds of wrong mindset and wrong belief system even among us. I was thinking about that this morning as I was listening to, you know, Luke 15. Listening to this, this elder brother who heard that his younger brother has finally come home. And rather than him rejoicing that this guy is finally back home, he was complaining to his father. All these years I've served you. And this is a word to our generation. All these years I've served you. Imagine me. Say, all these years I've served you. And then one crazy person who has squandered the things of God. Maybe who has been caught in all kinds of ad ad adultery and all kinds of things. And the Lord restored that person. And then you start getting jealous of that person. We need to have an understanding of where God is bringing us in this new day. There will be things that will be happening in this end of days. And some of us, out of self-righteousness, will be thinking, but this person does not deserve a seat. Is it, is it not this man that was caught with a woman? Is it not this woman that was caught with God knows what? But guess what? God is touching heart. God is changing lives. It's not in your position to blame anyone. You cannot be more righteous than God. I've been in the house all these years. But you have never killed a fat cow for me. You've never gave me anything. But this your son. Who's gone to live a prodigal life? Who's gone to squander every resource that you have? Now he's back home. And suddenly, you've given him a seat. Suddenly, you've given him a, a authority. Suddenly, you've put a ring in his hand. Hey, if church, we need to be careful because these things are going to be happening. And we're going to be pointing fingers to some man of God, to some pastors. Men of God today who have left ministry. Listen to this. It's not the will of God for them to be condemned. Many of them will be restored back. 
and it's our position. It's our position. I'm preparing you right now, preparing your mind so that when that person, that man is restored, you don't begin to nurse all kinds of resentment in your heart. When the woman is restored, you don't start, you know, you know, thinking of all kinds of things. They don't deserve it. That will be self-righteousness and that is what is going to cause your own demise. Because we are praying. We are praying for many of, many of those men of God. The many we have heard in America to be restored. And it's good that they were exposed so that they, God can help them to deal with what they need to deal with. But guess what? There are many in this part of the world that have done worse, but we don't have a system to even expose them. When you look at them, you, you want to worship them. No! Abomination. So we thank God for the system in America that is able to expose that false man, that false person, yes. But guess what? God is in the business of redemption. God is in the business of restoration. I believe somebody just needs to hear this. Or else you're going to develop this high attitude. This person has no right to preach. Who told you? Who told you that? Who told you that? You don't know. You don't know what is going on in the life of people. And you don't know how they are tracking with God. You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. We only know what God reveals to us. We know in part and therefore we prophesy in part. It will be, it will be over my dead body, dead body to want to see a man of God fall and fall away. That's a win for the devil, don't you think so? Don't you think so? It's our prayers, our desire to see restoration. To see restoration. To see restoration. You have a place on the table. I have a place on the table. We all have a place on the table. Let's get rid of self-righteousness. Let's get rid of self-righteousness. Let's get rid of the, the Pharisee. Are known to be self-righteous. Yet they are known to be lovers of money. It all goes hand in hand. God is speaking to us. It's time to pray. But prayer must come from a place of compassion. Must come from a place of truth. Must come from a place of love. Must come from a place of understanding. Must come from a place of compassion. This woman stopped. She, she refused to give up. She kept coming. It takes some level of self-identity. As a widow who has nothing but to keep going back. That, that tells you that this, that this woman had nothing, material-wise, money, but her identity was not tampered with. Oh God, help me here. No, I've got a place here. Advance me of my adversary. I have a voice here. I'm a child of the king. I'm a daughter of the king. Avenge me of my adversary. The Bible says, though he will not listen for a while, he finally make up his mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this woman justice. This is Jesus' story to buttress the issue why we need to pray and not to faint. And not to faint, not to faint, not to give up. What do you see when you look at the nations? I say, what do you see when you, when you see the nation? What do you hear? What is the Lord saying to you? Do you still see an harvest coming? Or do you see the Antichrist taking over? What do you see? What do you see over your nation? What are you hearing? What is God saying over America? What is God saying over South Africa? What is the voice of God over Namibia? What is the voice of God over South Sudan? What is the voice of God over Botswana? What is the mind of God? You understand? Yes. Over Syria, over Iran, over Iraq. What is the voice of God over Israel? What do you hear? What are you seeing? 
Because so as far as you can see is what God gives to you. If you see defeat, what do you see? When you look at Russia, do you see Third World War? With what, you know, Joe Biden just did now by asking, you know, the Ukrainians to use this long-range missile. Are you seeing Third World War? Or are you seeing Christ intervening? What do you see? What are you hearing? What are you picking? The church must position themselves at the gate. We have to be intermediaries. We have to take our place as portals. We have to regulate things in the spirit. We don't fold our hands and let politicians define and determine the destiny of the nation. No. We're a governmental people. Our prayers governmental. God said, ask of me, I will give you nations. Why would they give you nations? If you don't know how to, how to handle issues, come on. If you cannot stake your place and make decrees over nations. God doesn't give us things that he, we have no capacity, you understand, to handle. Oh. What do you see? What are you hearing? When you look at your congregation, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? How visible are you in the spirit on behalf of what God has co commissioned you, committed into your hands? What I see regarding the world of business, are you seeing the world taking over or are you seeing believers rising, coming up, hallelujah, with new ideas, fresh ideas to break forth into the marketplace? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Is your mind full of carnality, flesh? Or are you seeing, amen, yes, the righteousness of God being prevailed in every sector of life? Are you a man of faith or a person of doubt? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? The kingdom is the Lord. He's the governor among the nations. Write down the vision, make it plain. What is your vision regarding the spirit of prayer and intercession? What is your vision regarding the place, hallelujah, of the advancement of the purpose of God? Raise God a pillar in the nation. Raise for God a pillar in the nations. Raise for God a government over the nation. Ask of me and I will give you. Nebra Gaziblana Matayada. Oh, we honor you, Lamb of God. We raise a cloud, we raise a fire on the altar. We see you, Lord, rise in your glory, in your power, in your majesty. We see you rise, O oh God. We see your power rise. We see your glory rise. We see your spirit rise. We anticipate new day, new beginnings, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching the hearts of men and women all across the nations. A people will serve you. A nation, yes, a remnant of people are waking up in this reality, O oh God. They are advancing towards the place of your prophetic desire and counsel. The nation is the Lord. Oh, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Teach us how to pray, Father. Teach us how to pray. Yes, teach us how to pray. May we not be tired. May we not give up. May we not be defeated and may we not feel defeated. In the name of Jesus. In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea grant me justice against my adversary for some time he refused he refused but finally he said to himself even though I don't fear God or care what people think yet because this widow kept bothering me I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me <laughs> and the Lord said listen to what the unjust judge says and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones we are a chosen people 
We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people called to show forth the praises of Yahweh. We don't give up. We thank Him. We are a chosen people. Will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? No. I tell you, he will see. God will see that they get justice. And quickly, God will see that they get justice. And quickly, however, will the Son of Man, when he comes, find faith on earth? <laughs> That is where I rest my case. When he returned, will there be still people praying? Will there be still people interceding, seeking, yes, for God to come, for his will to be done? Will there still be people, will there still be men and women who are still in the faith, meaning that they still come knocking and say, God, justice, justice for America, justice for South Africa. Justice for Nigeria, justice for Uganda, justice for Namibia, justice for Botswana, justice for Zimbabwe, justice, justice is what we cry for, 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 for Canada, justice for Australia, justice for Libya, justice for the Palestinian people, justice. They are people, regardless of the name you call them, they are not animals, they are human beings. Justice. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There's no second class citizens. One nation is not preferred than the other. Every soul matters to God. He died for every soul. Justice. Justice all across the land. Justice for the people in Brazil. Justice for the people in Mozambique. Justice. That's our cry. We are not politicians. We track the things of the spirit through the wisdom of the spirit. Justice. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we honor your name. Justice for 2025. We already pray, you know, God, that you grant us insight in road into the coming days, into the coming weeks, into the coming months. We lift a cry. We declare newness. Break forth, O oh God. We ask that the clouds are forming. Thank you, Father, once again for the spirit of visibility. Justice, O oh God, is what we want. Not the justice of men, but your justice system. Yes. Yes. Justice, O oh God. Justice against the spirit of Babylon. Justice that will break the hold of iniquity over the nation. We are the Daniel's church. We are the Daniel's generation. We refuse to bow. We refuse to bow. We refuse to burn. In the name of Jesus, arise, O Lord. You and the ark of your might. Come, Lord, into your house. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your intentions be revealed in our hearts and through our lives. We thank you this morning that as we pray, yes, Lord, we receive justice. As we pray, we receive, oh God, what indeed you have given unto us. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a stroke of your word will go unfulfilled. We thank you this morning. We anticipate a new day. Provision is our portion. Justice is our portion. Thank you, Father, that in everything that we do, our life radiates your glory and majesty. We thank you that we have justice over health. We have justice, yes, over health. We receive health, health, healthy life. Thank you, O oh God. Strength, grace. Thank you for provision financially. We receive, we receive in Jesus' name. We do not lack anything good. You provide for us because that's who you are. You are our Jehovah Jireh. 
we thank you. We honor your name. We write down the vision. We make it plain. Thank you, Father, for creativity. Thank you, Father, for insight, direction, wisdom, knowledge, counsel. Yes, Father. Thank you for your fear. The fear of the Lord guides us. We do not lean onto our own understanding. In all things, we acknowledge you. You direct our path. We thank you, Lord, this day for your favor over your church, over your people. Yes, that man going, that woman going out this morning, wherever the time zone, I pray, Father, guide their step, lead them, O oh God, to the place of your glorious intention. Let your favor lead them where they have been rejected. Father, thank you that they will go back because indeed, as this woman has shown us an attitude, she kept persisting. Avenge me of my adversary. We will not give up. Thank you, Father, for ability to know what to do in every occasion. Thank you, Father, for direction. Thank you, Father, for the ability to understand what is required. Thank you, Father, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to you, Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Change all over the nations. Change happening all over the land. Change happening within society and communities. Change happening in our homes, family. Change happening within the mindset of men and women. Thank you, Father, for the ability to rise above the waters, to go forth, to express your desire and your demand. It's a brand new day. Thank you, Father, for a, a, a men and women taking their rightful place in their giftings and calling. Thank you, Father, for a new cream of apostles, yes, and prophets, hallelujah, yes, and shepherds. Thank you, Spirit of God, for, for pastors, evangelists rising. Thank you for the fullness of your spirit. You're pouring out yourself. As you said in the book of Joel, in the last day, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We've seen the outpour, oh God, yes, in the measure. This is the end of days where you say you will pour out your spirit without measure. Thank you, Father, for the latter rain. We anticipate, we wait for the outpouring. We have a vision. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For a new day. We have a vision for a new church rising. An ecclesia that is not defeated. An ecclesia that is sold out. We anticipate an ecclesia sold out, oh God. Yes. People of the spirit, not of the flesh. People of the spirit, not of the flesh. People of the spirit, not of the flesh. People who serve God, who have no confidence in the flesh. We have the company of them who serve God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We have no confidence in the flesh. We thank you, O oh God. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your voice. Thank you, Father, for your glorious intention. Thank you, Father, for your counsel. Thank you, Father, for men and women who desire to learn to pray. We are in the school of Christ. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the passion. Thank you for the longing. Yes, Lord, to seek your face evermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the heart. A heart that is contrite. A heart of integrity, yet skillful hands. Hallelujah. We bless you. Glory to you, Lamb of God. Glory to you, Lamb of God. Glory to you, Lamb of God. Glory to you, King of glory. Amen. Thank you so very much, everyone, this morning. Wherever you're watching from, wherever your time zone is, I really thank God that we are able to spend this period just to make certain decrees and make certain declaration into the spiritual atmosphere. We have prayed from... The book of uh, Luke chapter 18 this morning. And this book, as I mean, this chapter, which of course Jesus himself declared to his own disciples, showing them that men always ought to pray and not to give up. It's a timely word that we all need. Please don't give up on your prayer life. Let God continue to strengthen you. Let God continue to guide you. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, keep your mind set on the Lord. Continue to pray and it will be well with you. God bless you. I'll see you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.